startuprad.io. Your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from startuprad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany, as well as the world's first internet radio station dedicated to startups and tech companies. Today, I would like to welcome you to a new mini series together with the German Startup Association. We try to bring you an interview with each and every winner of the German Startup Awards 2021. As you can already guess, I do have a winner here. Hey, Henrika, how you doing? Hello, hello. Hello to um, all the listeners out there. I'm I'm doing well today, actually. Um, it's it's quite a nice day out and looking forward to um, having this conversation with you, Jörn. I'm looking forward to it as well. We may tell our listeners that you're here because you're the female entrepreneur of the year uh, in the German Startup Awards 2021. Congratulations. Let us first... Social ent Entrepreneur of the Year, which is uh, quite exciting. Social Entrepreneur. I'm so sorry. Um, Social Entrepreneur of the Year, German Startup Awards 2021. <clears throat> I'm so sorry. Um, but before we get into why you won that award, let us talk a little bit about what you've been doing. As the listeners already can tell, you have a slight UK accent in your English and you went to university in London. How did you end up there? <laughs> that was um that was definitely quite a ride. So I spent um I spent some time in the UK um when I was 15, 16 and um I kind of fell in love with the country and then I um came back to Germany and I did my um uh, IB International Baccalaureate in a, at a German state school. So I I also um I, I also took the normal German Abitur um and um yeah and then I really wanted to go back to the UK and I applied to um yeah a broad range of different um, universities. What I knew back then is that I um, wanted to study mathematics, which is um, not quite the usual um, thing to study, I guess. But I always I always really liked um, math. Um, so I applied to different universities, ended up at UCL and really loved my time at UCL. It was, um, I think UCL has about 130 different um, nationalities. So it's a very, um, very international um, crowd. And um, I really enjoyed my, my four years in, in, in London. I am seeing here on your LinkedIn profile, as everybody else can do, because your LinkedIn profile will be linked down here, um, mathematics with modern languages that is quite a combination what, why did you choose to do that well so i um so my main focus was in, on maths and uh, and pure maths um but i also took classes in um spanish and french um and i don't i i do think that maths and languages are in a way related like maths is a universal language right like it's a way of expressing in a very precise way um, definition proofs concepts ideas and um, and obviously French and Spanish are also languages and it's it's kind of key to keep to, or and for me I guess it's it's different ways of communicating um, with people and languages have have always been very um, very dear to my heart and uh, uh, it's it's always interesting to learn new languages and, and forms of communication I got a challenge for you what is your most favorite word because for me in Spanish, when I was uh, studying Spanish that I used later on in college in Texas quite extensively, when I took a, an afternoon nap, I told my roommates, una horita, it's the cuteness form of one hour. Um, but what would be, what would be your favorite word in Spanish and French? Oh my God, that's such a difficult question. Um... We don't do the easy questions here. Sorry. You definitely, you definitely don't do the do, do the easy questions. What I was just thinking of is, um, I, I like words that um, that are, usually come from one language, uh, from one language, but then are just taken over into another language, like zeitgeist and uh, you know those those words that are actually German, but then uh -huh. Schadenfreude. I think those words are quite interesting because you you know you just take it from another language and then uh, use it in a um, in a new language because. It's, there's no real translation for it. So I think that's that's quite interesting word. So what are your favorite words? Um, 
Oh, if you have, if I have to say something, then um, uh, in French it would be for me croissant. <laughs> croissant baguette. Um, uh, I think I'm going to really enjoy this interview. <laughs> you, you will. Oh my god, I'm I'm trying to think of like beautiful words. I think it's it's. I'm thinking of like the different words for um, like l'été, le, the the summer, or um, um, I think you know French language in general is 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 quite a beautiful. Um, a beautiful language um so definitely way way more beautiful than german mm -hmm. just from the sheer sound of it uh -huh. so you've been a math crack studying modern languages and then you ended up as a consultant with bcg um why did you decide to go for consulting and what did you learn there mm -hmm. I mean, studying math at a British university, you um, you don't get to see many different job opportunities and, and uh, well, opportunities, yes, but um, different career paths and choice. So I guess what um, um, what is being portrayed to you is, is mainly, hey, you can work in investment banking, you can work in consulting, you can work in insurance, um, and maybe you can go into one of the um, uh, big four um, like KPMG, P PwC, but um, that's essentially it. And these are the companies, you know, that get invited to, uni to university. And um, so I, I would say, so <laughs> that's kind of what it felt like, of what the range was. Um, so I, I, as you said earlier, um, I had a quick look into one of the investment banks. You know, I, that's definitely not the, the way that I wanted to go into uh, or the, the career path that I wanted to follow. And, um, and then decided to, um, uh, go into um, consulting. Actually, right after university, I took a year out and kind of looked into different things and worked for a staff for a little bit um, and um, to really broaden my horizon a little bit um, worked for um, a, um, a small sized company in Frankfurt and then interned with um, BCG and then ended up there for um, almost three years and um, doing various consulting projects. and. It was a very, very um, intense and interesting time. Uh, I mean, BCG is a very vibrant place, right? A lot of really young talent, um, very ambitious and driven um, people. Um, you get to see lots of different industries. Um, I was lucky as, um, you know, I was um, with the BCG Digital, Digital Ventures project as well. It's a um, it's a sub part of uh, BCG where they build startups. Um, Uh, for a, for a longer project, so um, that was really quite interesting. We looked into the fintech um, world, and um, uh, but in the end, I had a feeling that you know, as society, we're actually facing some of the, we're actually facing some big big challenges, and climate change is obviously just one. Um, there's lots of other challenges like mental mental health crisis that we're um, <laughs> that we're in at the moment. Um, you know. Um, The divide between the rich and the poor that is um, uh, deepening, um, and so on and so forth. So it's like, you know, there is there is so much talent here, yet these people are not working on some of the biggest challenges of our times. And isn't that something um, that we should change? Isn't that isn't that something that we need? Shouldn't we build a place where all of these people can come together, where we bundle resources, where we bundle expertise? Um, opportunities, um, networks, um, to really start thinking and working on some of the um, some of the biggest challenges that we face as a society. And when did you decide that when you got from a consulting gig back like at 2 a.m. in the morning and fell onto your bed and thought, hmm, I could do differently? Or was it uh, you've been so thrilled by consulting and thought, oh, I learned everything, now I have to go on? It's always a process, I want to say. So, um, I mean, there are those moments where you think like, hey, I definitely want to get out of uh, out of this. I want to do something new. I want to be crazy. Um, that These moments definitely exist, but it's always um, something um, that has to develop and, and come up. And, um, and, and obviously you have to... to, to sharpen your your thoughts as well um so that these were ideas that um that i had in mind and then i actually met up with um uh, a university friend of mine and philip my um uh, co-ceo um and i told them about these ideas and they said hey you know this is exactly what we 
uh, what we have in mind as well for Project Together. And um, yeah, that, that was the kind of the start for um, uh, for um, Project Together as it is today. Um, I understood you've been in consulting. It was a process. You decided to go crazy and rescue the world with Project Together. Was, was, was that about it? Well, you always have you always have to have big um, visions, missions, ideas um, uh, uh, when you want to when you want to change something. Um, so uh, that's definitely it. But back then, it um, it all seemed seemed crazy. We just knew, we, you know, we, we knew we wanted to do something. We wanted to change something, and um, uh, and you know, now we are here two and a half years later, and it is still very much at the beginning of. Um, of the transforma transformation that we'll have to go through as a society over the next few years. Um, but, um, you know, obviously with Project Together, uh, we've made um, some uh, some progress, built up a team, uh, and that, that's really quite exciting. We may add for our listeners who are not really seeing this picture and see your name tag Project Together – It's actually not you call your company together and you call it a project because, but the actual name is projecttogether.org. And how did you come up with the name and what do you guys are actually doing there? Um, so what is maybe one little anecdote? So because you because you just said it for your listeners, and um, that d definitely that does happen. The project together. So when we were um, like a few years ago, when we were based in a co-working space. Um, people sometimes came were sent up to us because because then you know at the um, uh, at the door they said like hey they're here for a project together with I don't know X Y Z and then people always thought oh they're here for a project together and then send them up to us so that does, definitely does happen. Um, so what does <laughs> what does what does um, project together do? So um, essentially um, what we said is that hey you know. Um, You know, as I said earlier, we're facing some of, these, some of these big challenges, and so many people are talking about the what, like you know, climate crisis, all of these issues. But um, very few people are talking about the how do we actually get there, and don't do we not don't we need like um, innovation on the on the process, on the method of how as society we can come up with these bottom up ideas and then actually implement them. So um, we've. We've um, developed a process for that that we call open social innovation. And um, essentially, we run massive open social innovation programs where we uh, work with 150, sometimes even now we're working with over 300 uh, solutions around one um, societal issue. To give you an example, um, so we take, for example, um, agriculture and food and we say, like, hey, how, do, how can we become climate um positive in the agriculture and, and food space and um, it's actually called farm food climate and um, we started working with farm food climate um, about a year ago uh, and we've worked with over 100 different um, impact um, initiatives and um, that have you know all sorts of ideas of how we can how we can tackle that problem and what we do is then um, we support them with kind of everything they need from um, what we call stipends, so money, um, to expertise, um, contacts into the, um, uh, you know, the, the uh, public sphere, um, but also companies, organizations. We connect the startups amongst themselves, and we really build um, a community and an ecosystem um, around um, those challenges. Uh, and we bundle together, you know, similar ideas, um, partners that want to support these, because um, we really believe that it's not just one idea that can solve these big challenges, but it's always a cluster, an ecosystem of ideas, partners, networks um, that can do that. I was, I would be a little bit curious how you get those projects started, because you said you're working in open. How do you call it? Open. Open social innovation. Is Open what we call the social whole innovation projects. You work together with uh, hundreds of counterparts, and I do believe your process is pretty good. But not one person can handle it. You need like a handful of people for that. And where did it come up with the initial problem? And how did you f do you find the startups that are then 
working on this? Mm -hmm. So how do we come up um, with the problem? We, we're constantly learning um, uh, as well and trying out new things, how, how we actually do that. So, um, for example, for Farm Food Climate that I just mentioned, we actually had a three-month process where we ran weekly open discussion forums and dialogues and invited all sorts of um, experts, citizens, um, uh, farmers to come and discuss with us what were the biggest problems in, in the space. And, you know, sometimes we set a theme for a call and then um, kind of dived, uh, uh, dived a little bit deeper there. Um, so, yeah, it was really a three months open dialogue um, to, to understand the field and the space for um, what is now called Update Deutschland, Update uh, Germany. Um, a new program that started in March. We um, we did a completely different um, uh, process, which was also really interesting. We had an, an open call for challenges, so um, people from um, uh, you know from the public sphere, citizens, um, civil society organizations, they um, were all asked to. Um, uh, hand in different challenges, like concrete challenges that they were facing. We got over 600 uh, different challenges and then kind of clustered them and, and and saw where in Germany are similar challenges that need to be need to be tackled. So that that was a very much an open, uh, a bottom up, um, open open process um, of how we came up with the challenges that were then um, that are now being tackled in in, in the program. Ah, too bad if you if I uh, I didn't know about this, I think I could have contributed at least thirty or forty challenges. <laughs> you should have, you should have. Or maybe to give a, a third example uh, that some of your mis listeners might have heard of. So last year we organized the Wir versus Virus Hackathon, um, or Wir versus Virus. Um, and um, and obviously the support program, the six months support program afterwards as well. But um, the hackathon we organized together with uh, seven other civil society organizations. And there, um, we obviously we had the big challenge, like how did, how you know how are we going to solve all of these problems that are now arising with um, COVID? And it was within the first week of um, of the lockdown, and um, we literally just posted it out there, and we got over two thousand. Um, challenges um, back for the hackathon so um, within two days which was uh, quite interesting um, back then and um, then just posted the entire list of um, of challenges for the hackathon I would be now curious about two things first who can approach you with the challenges what way and how do you find actually the working on those challenges mm -hmm. So um, for different programs, as I just said, uh, or gave you different examples, it, it kind of depends uh, on, on the process for um, Update Germany. Essentially, everybody, um, all kind, kinds of citizens, civil society organizations um, could come up and, and contribute um, challenges. So we're, we're really quite open there. Um, how do we then work on these and how do we how do we fund ourselves so how do we work on these is um it's um you know we we choose 100 150 with update germany it's more than 300 um initiatives impact startups um organizations um that we're now working with and that are at the core of of um of that um of that community and um we support them with um, voluntary coaches, experts, organizations that contribute resources um, and all sorts of things. And then obviously for every program, we have um, partners to help us finance this. That can be um, um, organizations and companies and or its um, foundations. And they they kind of sponsor um the you know the work that goes into it from our side and the the operational the operational costs behind it. Mm -hmm. And for the people, the organizations, the impact startups, the social startups, the whoever helps to solve those challenges, how do you find them, and what can they expect from a corporation? So um, uh, these impact initiatives, impact startups, um, organizations that we support, uh, we literally have an open call for um, uh, applications. So 
you know, once we've found the challenge and um, we say like, hey, who, who has an idea of how we can tackle this? And, um, you know, they can be very, very early stage. Uh, so you can you only need like a team and an idea uh, to, to to join um, and um, or you can be a little bit um, further along the lines and already have a, a concept or a proven concept um, for something that um, fits the challenge. And for, you know, Wir versus Virus and updates in update Germany, um, it, um, it was also possible for people without an idea or without um, a, a team to join because we had these, you know, starting points, these hackathon-like um, weekends. It was a 48-hour starting sprint um, where all of the people um, who wanted um, to contribute came together and um, discussed the challenges, discussed um, ideas. It was some. Um, it was a weekend in March where five thousand people came together digitally online, and um, people who the, the six hundred people who contributed challenges. They, um, um, uh, they, you know, they gave gave a little bit of context around the challenges, and then uh, and then people started ideating on the ideas. Some people, actually, a lot of people brought existing initiatives and um and ideas and then people could either join um initiative or start a new one um and so new lots of new ideas also came out of, of that weekend um so it's either you know um you have an idea and um you know build up on it and you're a little bit further along the line um or you have no idea no team and you join one of those um uh weekends and uh, start ideating that, that would have been my question if I could have just joined you as a team of me and my cat. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, if, if you want to do something around cats, then um, that could be a great teammate. <laughs> okay. Um, I, not not I, sure how well your cat is handling Excel spreadsheets and PowerPoint presentations and things like that. Just awesome. Walk walks across the keyboard. Everything's totally fine. Hmm? Yeah. So, sometimes even something uh, interesting comes up there. Um, we we've been now talking what project together is. Uh, some of your projects. Um, people know down here in the show notes they can learn more. And is there a special project? you've been receiving the award for or was it just that you and project together are awesome <laughs> i guess you have to ask the 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 jury and it's um i, I guess it, uh, one thing that is um very important to me is that obviously you know the, i was the one who um who held the trophy and you know um said thank you for the award but it's actually lots of people out there the, the entire project together community um, all of the other civil society organizations that uh, we work with, the entire team, you know, so many people have um, put so much effort into what Project Together is today, all of our volunteers. Um, so these, this award is definitely um, belongs as much to them as it belongs uh, to me. And um, and that's really what, you know, what is also part of our name, right? It's Project Together. We, we will not be able to solve these challenges alone. Only um, if we come together um, as society, develop our ideas bottom up together, start supporting each other, start thinking in um, networks and clusters and um, and support system rather than competition and single ideas and pushing single ideas. Um, so yeah, I guess that's that's also part of um, part of um, you know what this um, award kind of or I hope that's kind of what the support uh, that the award wants to um, um, underline or give credit to. When you've been talking about it belongs to all the people working on Project Together, uh, I was wondering, you're keeping the award somewhere in the office where everybody can see and touch it? Not yet, because I haven't really been back to the office yet, right? Because of Corona, we're in, um, uh, in home office and lockdown but i will yeah we'll definitely keep it on you tweet us a picture um sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm not as much as on we... twitter but um sure, I'll, uh, I'll i'll try and do that we take instagram as well don't worry <laughs> <laughs> um th there would be quite a lot more 
to talk about, but we're now running approximately at 25 minutes with our recording. I'd like to thank you very much, uh, deutschestartups.org, for making this interview possible. And everybody who'd like to learn more, of course, go down here in the show notes. There will be at least a link to our blog post or go to www.startuprate.io forward slash blog and there you'll find the interview of Henrike and all the other award winners we can get our hands on and um, there you find all the links leading to project together update Deutschland update Deutschland it was update Deutschland right yeah, yeah two languages com combined I was I was want to say update Germany but no it's update Deutschland via versus virus your LinkedIn profile and everything else Thank you very much. It was just a pleasure having you as a guest. Thank you very much. If you are a professional looking at the European startup scene, Germany is a place you cannot miss. Fortunately for you, there is StartupRad.io, the authority on German startups. This English-only podcast brings you fresh interviews each week. Most likely, you have never heard or read anything on these startups before in English. But you will in the future. Be ahead of the curve and subscribe to StartupRad.eo podcast or check for the StartupRad.eo internet radio station. Check your Alexa for the StartupRad.eo skill as well.